Welcome to History Unleashed, your hub for uncovering the fascinating intersections of genetics, history, and culture. Today, we are diving into a question that S sparked curiosity among scientists and everyday folks alike. What makes Jewish DNA so unique? From ancient origins in the Middle East to a global diaspora spanning centuries, Jewish populations have maintained a genetic identity that stands out in the world of human genetics. In this video, we'll explore the science behind their shared ancestry, the cultural practices that preserved it, the historical migrations that shaped it, and why it matters today, both for history and medicine. Whether you're here to learn about your own roots or just love a good genetic mystery, stick around. This journey is going to be packed with insights. Let's start with the basics. Who are we talking about? Jewish populations are incredibly diverse, but they're often grouped into three main categories. Ashkenazi Jews hailing from Central and Eastern Europe are the largest group today, making up about 80% of the world's Jewish population. Think Poland, Germany, Russia. Their story is one of resilience through centuries of change. Sephardi Jews, originally from the Iberian Peninsula, Spain and Portugal, were forced out during the Spanish Inquisition in 1492, scattering to places like North Africa, the Ottoman Empire, and even the Americas. Mizrahi Jews from the Middle East and North Africa, including Iraq, Iran, Yemen, and beyond, have lived in these regions for millennia. Despite being spread across continents, these groups share a common thread, an ancestry that traces back to the ancient Middle East, specifically the Levant. Think modern-day Israel, Palestine, Lebanon, and surrounding areas. That's our starting point, and it's where the genetic story begins. So what does the science say? Genetic studies have revealed that Jewish populations Ashkenazi, Sephardi, Mizrahi, cluster closely together when compared to other groups worldwide. They carry significant genetic markers tied to the Middle East. Geneticists use three main types of DNA to piece together ancestry. First, autosomal DNA comes from all 22 pairs of non-sex chromosomes and gives us the big picture of someone's heritage. Studies show Jewish groups form a distinct cluster, sitting between Middle Eastern and European populations on genetic maps. Second, why chromosomal DNA tracks paternal lineages, father to son. About 35 to 43 percent of Jewish men belong to haplogroup J, and another 15 to 30 percent to E1b1b, both of which are super common in the Levant. Third, mitochondrial DNA, mtDNA, follows maternal lines, mother to child. Here's where it gets interesting. Ashkenazi Jews, for example, have up to 80% European mtDNA, suggesting their moms were often local Europeans, while their Y-DNA stays Middle Eastern, pointing to dads from the Levant. One of the most groundbreaking studies came in 2010, published in Nature by Doron Bihar and colleagues. They looked at genome-wide data from 237 people across 14 Jewish communities, Ashkenazi, Sephardi, Mizrahi, you name it, and compared them to non-Jewish groups. The result? Jewish populations are genetically closer to each other than to their non-Jewish neighbors, even if they've lived in the same regions for centuries. Their DNA tells a story of a shared origin in the Middle East preserved across time and distance. This shared ancestry is like a genetic fingerprint linking Jews worldwide back to the ancient Levant. But how did this genetic closeness stick around for so long? The answer lies in a practice called endogamy, marrying within the community. For centuries, Jewish religious laws, known as halakha, have encouraged marriage within the faith and restricted conversion into Judaism. This wasn't just a cultural choice, it shaped their DNA. Endogamy limited genetic mixing with non-Jewish populations, creating what scientists call a genetic bottleneck. Ancient Middle Eastern markers stayed intact, passed down through generations with little outside influence. A 2010 study by Gil Atzmon and his team found that the genetic distance between Jewish individuals is way smaller than between non-Jews from the same areas. On average, any two Jewish people are as related as fifth cousins, a level of closeness you don't see in most other widespread populations. Researchers analyzing 2 million DNA markers found that Jewish populations share identical DNA segments, each about 3 million base pairs long, at a rate 10 times higher than with non-Jews. That's the power of endogamy at work, keeping those ancient genetic ties strong. Think of it like a family reunion that has been going on for thousands of years, everyone is connected, even if they don't know it. Now, Jewish communities weren't completely cut off from the world. 
As they migrated, they mixed with local populations to varying degrees, a process called admixture. Ashkenazi Jews, for example, are estimated to have about 60% European ancestry and 40% Middle Eastern. The European part comes mostly from Southern Europe, think Italy and Greece, likely from migrations through the Roman Empire. A 2013 study by Marta Costa and colleagues found that over 80% of Ashkenazi maternal lineages trace back to Europe, while paternal lines stay Middle Eastern. Picture Jewish men from the Levant marrying European women as they settled in places like Italy and Germany. Sephardi Jews, before their expulsion from Spain in 1492, mixed with Iberian locals and after scattering to North Africa and the Ottoman Empire, they picked up more regional DNA, though their core Middle Eastern ancestry held strong. Mizrahi Jews, living in the Middle East and North Africa, reflect the genetic makeup of those regions, like Iraqi Jews sharing traits with other Middle Easterners, while Ethiopian Jews are an exception, with about 80% East African ancestry due to their unique history. Even with this mixing, Jewish groups maintain a distinct genetic profile. A 2009 study showed that Ashkenazi ancestry could be predicted with 100% accuracy using genome-wide data. Admixture added flavor to the genetic recipe, but it didn't erase the original ingredients. Here's another piece of the puzzle, the founder effect. This occurs when a population grows from a small group of ancestors, limiting genetic diversity and boosting certain traits, good or bad. For Ashkenazi Jews, this effect is huge. Geneticists estimate that today, S10 million plus Ashkenazi Jews descend from just 350 individuals who lived 600, 800 years ago in Europe. That's a tiny starting point. This bottleneck made their DNA more uniform and increased the frequency of certain genetic disorders, such as Tay-Sachs disease, a fatal condition affecting the nervous system. Gaucher disease, a disorder where fatty substances build up in organs, and BRCA1 and BRCA2 mutations, which are linked to higher risks of breast and ovarian cancer. For example, 1 in 30 Ashkenazi Jews carry the Tay-Sachs mutation, compared to 1 in 300 in the general population. BRCA mutations are also more common, making genetic screening a game-changer for this community. Other Jewish groups show founder effects, too. Studies of mitochondrial DNA reveal that 27% of Moroccan Jews trace back to one female ancestor, 43% of Tunisian Jews to four women, and 39.8% of Libyan Jews to one woman. Small beginnings left big genetic legacies, and this isn't just history. It's why genetic testing matters so much today. The uniqueness of Jewish DNA also has real-world impact in medicine. Because of the founder effect, certain disorders are more common, but knowing this helps. In Ashkenazi communities, screening for diseases like Tay-Sachs and Canavan disease before marriage or pregnancy has slashed their incidence, a success story of genetics meeting community action. Plus, understanding mutations like BRCA can guide cancer prevention. If you're Ashkenazi and carry these genes, early detection or preventive steps can save lives. Beyond Jewish populations, studying these high-frequency variants helps scientists learn about diseases that affect everyone because when a mutation is common, it's easier to study. Jewish DNA isn't he just a window into the past. It is a tool for a healthier future. Knowledge is power, and this genetic story proves it. Let's clear up a historical rumor, the Khazar hypothesis. Some have claimed that Ashkenazi Jews descend from the Khazars, a Turkic people who converted to Judaism in the 8th century. Sounds intriguing, right? But genetics says otherwise. A 2016 study by Das and colleagues analyzed Ashkenazi DNA and found no significant Khazar ancestry. Instead, the evidence points to a Middle Eastern origin with European admixture, matching historical records of Jews moving from the Levant to Europe. Earlier studies hinting at Khazar roots, like one in 2013, faced criticism for shaky methods. The consensus is clear. Ashkenazi Jews, like their Sephardi and Mizrahi kin, trace back to ancient Israel, not the Caucasus. Science has a way of setting the record straight. Want more proof? Let's look at ancient DNA. In 2022, a study in Cell examined DNA from 33 people buried in a medieval Jewish cemetery in Erfurt, Germany, and found two distinct groups among these medieval Ashkenazi Jews. One group matched modern Ashkenazi and Sephardic Jews with strong Middle Eastern ties, while the other had Eastern European contributions, suggesting mixing with local populations. 
Today, S. Ashkenazi Jews are a blend, about 60% from the first group and 40% from the second. This shows how dynamic Jewish genetics has been, evolving with each migration while holding on to its core identity. It's like finding a genetic diary from the Middle Ages. How does Jewish DNA stack up globally? When plotted against other populations, Jewish groups cluster near Levantines, Palestinians, Bedouin, and Druze. One study found that 70% of Jewish and 82% of Palestinian Y chromosomes share the same ancient paternal pool, a deep connection indeed. Yet despite these ties, Jewish populations still form their own distinct clusters, separate from both Middle Eastern and European neighbors. Endogamy, founder effects, and their unique diaspora history make them stand out. They're part of the human family, but with a twist all their own. Let's tackle some questions you might have. Can DNA prove someone's Jewish? It can show Jewish ancestry, but being Jewish is also about culture and faith. DNA is just one part. Why the disease risks in Ashkenazi Jews? It's the founder effect at work. Small groups pass down rare mutations that stuck around. Is there a Jewish gene? Nope. It's a combination of markers, not one magic gene. And how good are DNA tests for this? They're great for Ashkenazi ancestry, which is super distinct, but trickier for Sephardi or Mizrahi groups due to more mixing. Genetics plus culture equals Jewish identity. So why care about Jewish DNA? It's more than trivia. It's a lens into human history. Jewish migrations bridged the Middle East and Europe, showing how people moved and mixed over millennia. Their story reflects resilience, adaptation, and continuity. For science, it's a goldmine. Those founder effect mutations are helping unlock the secrets of diseases worldwide. And as technologies like whole genome sequencing grow, we'll learn even more. Maybe even how stress or diet left epigenetic marks on Jewish genes. Yet, it's important to keep it ethical. Jewish communities have faced misuse of science before, so research must respect their voices and benefit them, much like the successful screening programs. It's a story that keeps evolving. Jewish DNA is unique thanks to a shared Middle Eastern ancestry from the Levant, endogamy that locks in ancient markers, admixture that adds regional flavors without losing the core, and founder effects that shape both genetics and health. This isn't just about genes. It's a tale of migration, culture, and survival, with lessons for medicine and humanity. Thanks for joining me on this deep dive. If you enjoyed it, hit that like button, share it with friends, and subscribe to channel for more. Check the description for links to studies and resources. Until next time, keep exploring.